Hi, I'm Matt Manwiller, State Representative from Ellensburg, and I also serve on the Finance Committee in the Washington State House of Representatives. I'm not in charge of tax policy, but I am one of many legislators who consider tax policy for our state. And there has been a lot of conversations in the past few months about adding new taxes. But before we start talking about new taxes, let's talk about the taxes you already pay. In this two-year budget cycle, you're going to pay $3 billion in additional taxes. That's an 8.6 increase. Let me ask you, did you get an 8% raise this year? $3 billion is a lot of money, even for government. With this new revenue, and by prioritizing our spending, we have enough money to add more money to K-12 education, per the McCleary decision, and add funding for our mental health system and for our most vulnerable. We believe this can and should be done within existing revenues without raising taxes. So it seems to make sense to those of us who serve in state government, we should try to make do with what the taxpayers have already given us. Unfortunately, what you often find in government is that no matter how much money there is, for some people, there is literally never enough, and tax increases or new taxes are the first and only recourse when faced with a challenging budget situation. And, sure enough, even the additional $3 billion hasn't stopped some people in Olympia from claiming the state doesn't have enough tax revenues. Their argument says that taxes we're taking in aren't nearly enough to fund all the programs of Washington State. Washington's tax ranking, they say, has gone from 11th in the nation in the 1990s down to 35th in the nation today. And to them, that's a bad thing. In fact, the House Majority Party's budget proposal would increase taxes by $1.5 billion. They want to increase the B&O tax by 20%. It would increase taxes on everyone who works in these professions. Take a look. Are you on the list? I'd like to pause here and ask you a question. Do you feel undertaxed? Would you agree with the argument that you and your fellow citizens need due taxes? Should we be trying to regain our status as the 11th most taxed state in the nation? Now, to be fair, the people arguing in favor of new and increased taxes are also saying that Washington State's whole tax system is unfair and that it hits lower and middle class income people harder than higher income people. And you know what? You won't get any argument from me about how messed up our tax system is. A lot of people in the legislature from both parties would like to see some serious reforms. But one of their tax increases, masquerading as a tax reform, is to eliminate tax loopholes. They argue that eliminating unfair tax breaks can help fund education and other programs. But let's ask ourselves, where did these tax breaks come from? When thinking about how we got to where we are now, and this is not a small thing, Let's remember that the party in power in the State House and the governor's office have run the show in Olympia for most of the last three decades. They have fought hard to preserve our tax system the last 30 years. And for what all their current rhetoric against what they call loopholes says, here is a bracing statistic. Over the past decade, Democrats have prime sponsored 86% of the tax exemptions and Republicans only 14. Democrats have sponsored 120 out of the 140 tax exemption bills since 2005. So apparently, the Democrats are seeking to solve a problem they created. This type of hypocrisy is what drives voters crazy. But setting aside the hypocrisy, is this really the right solution? Closing tax incentives will generate more revenue in the short term, but in the long term, it doesn't address the problem. As businesses leave for better economic environments in other states, we will have driven away the businesses that create jobs and generate tax revenue for our schools. Let us also clarify, these are not loopholes or exemptions, but carve-outs or incentives. We have them so our state can stay competitive with other states and attract employers. These are in place because we are not a business-friendly state. If we were, would the party in power would have needed to sponsor 86% of the tax exemptions to keep businesses here? Our tax system can be regressive and sometimes pick winners and losers. My colleague in the House, Representative Drew McEwen, has offered a bold proposal that would simplify the B&O tax rates. It should be the beginning of a discussion of an important revenue stream in our state. It is also important to remember that tax reform is not the ultimate solution spending reform is. Looking at this bar graph, revenue has not been the problem. Maybe the priorities have been out of line much of the last 30 years. 
How is it fair that we ask taxpayers to foot the bill when lawmakers can't make ends meet with an 8.6% increase in revenue? Households and employers in Washington would love to see that type of increase in their bottom line. House Democrats want accountability and transparency with tax exemptions, but shouldn't that apply to the budget, especially if we want to ask more money from our taxpayers? According to our governor, lean management is the answer, but he only found $10 million in savings in a $39 billion budget. He found so little savings, you can hardly see it on this graphic. Let's be honest about the numbers. Taxpayers out there would have a hard time believing our government is operating as efficiently as it can if we can only find that much savings in such a sizable spending plan. So a quick review. Our friends across the aisle are criticizing our tax system and tax preferences we have in statute, a problem they created. Yet, their solution is to get rid of tax exemptions that keep many employers competitive and in Washington state, but offer no real solution. How thick is the hypocrisy? about 30 years worth since they've been in control most of that time and have yet to offer a meaningful solution. Let's stay on task. Be responsible with the taxpayers' money and we can start by using $3 billion efficiently, effectively, and control spending rather than use a regressive tax system as an excuse to tax and spend more. I'm Matt Manweller from Olympia. Hope you've enjoyed. Feel free to call us or contact any of your legislators in the next few weeks.